Welcome to the West Tigers podcast and Eddie Otto, a very special guest today. Yeah, g'day, Joel. We've got uh, the general manager of football at the West Tigers. Uh, very exciting for us to have him on. Adam Hardigan, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Thanks, gentlemen. How are we? Yep, good, very good, mate. I know you didn't want to, uh, you said didn't want to bore the fans with your background, but just give us a little bit about your time in professional rugby league. I know you, you joined the West Tigers last year from the, uh, the Roosters. Yeah, so I'm um, coming up to a year now. Um, prior to my time here, I was at the Roosters for 10 years, just in different roles. I started as an SG ball coach uh, way back in 2010. Uh, did a few roles there, SG ball coach, um, assistant for the 20s, coach the 20s for a couple of years, team manager role, and also recruitment manager. Um, and in that 10 years, had a year back school teaching is my, uh, my trade, I guess you'd say, um, PE teacher from Patrician Brothers College at Blacktown, so, um, which is obviously a proud rugby league school. Um, so yeah, it's it's in it's in our my family's blood and something that I've grown up with and something that I love. Adam, uh, what uh, we as fans sort of look at clubs from the outside and we, we can't really see inside and, and know exactly how it works. But what exactly is the general manager of football? What are some of your your main responsibilities and what is your what does your Tuesday look like for as an example? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, so my. Yeah, you know, my role starts basically when I wake up. Um, a lot of phone calls, dealing with managers. Um, I oversee the operations part of the rugby league at the club. Um, obviously, got a fair few staff that report into myself that you know they're responsible for those areas. Uh, things such as pathways, um, you know, the wellbeing department at the club, you know, football operations, you know, staffing. Uh, and obviously a big one of that is recruitment, retention and the salary cap. Um, and then obviously working with the club executive um, to make sure that the strategy and the focus of the club moving forward is in the right direction. Cool. And um, Adam, uh, we often talk as fans, we think, you know, West Tigers are the, the biggest sleeping giant, not only in Sydney, but in the competition in terms of the fan yeah. base we can go and uh, potential for better results. What what sort of attracted you to um, to joining the Tigers from the Roosters? To be honest, it was that. So um, conversations with obviously the coach Michael Maguire, and then um, when I had the opportunity to sit down with our CEO uh, Justin Pascoe, it was the opportunity, you know, to obviously make a significant improvement through my skill set uh, at the club, um, and then obviously the you know, the, the story that Justin and Madge told me on where they feel the club can get to and, you know, I would be a contributing factor in that. Um, you know, and I'm here to work my backside off to make sure that that happens. You know, and I suppose, you know, even, you know, you folks would probably be able to tell me, like, how, how can we make it the powerhouse? You know, from a fan's point of view, how do we convert our fans to members? Because that's a big driving force. You know, the more members that we get, you know, and I get, you know, this year's probably the anomaly that, you know, the, the black swan in the room where, you know, COVID's hit and financially it's tough for people. But, you know, especially from 21 onwards, how do we get people to convert to members? Because that member base, you know, and that financial security helps the club be that powerhouse that we all want to be. It, it is a chicken and the egg scenario, isn't it, Adam? It's yeah, it's definitely. Um, yeah, you know, that, comes, that comes with winning. Yeah. You know, we understand that. But it's the connection... Um, I guess the football club, the players connecting with the fans and the members, you know, how do you, you know, it's, it's that connection with the fans turning them into members so that the football club can grow and can be the powerhouse that we all want it to be. I think accessibility and exactly what we're doing now is a good example. I mean, to give the more faces that we give the club, the more we get to know who the people are that are in there. And, and as you say, you know, working your butt off to, to make it better for us fans who ultimately, you know, we, we, gain just as much and it does mean just as much to us even though we're not inherently linked into the club um so yeah this type of thing i think is what really engages fans and makes us yeah. feel that, you know we are important and i mean it's been fantastic and a thank you you know from both eddie and i that you know you're willing to take questions from from our oh, listeners yeah. and West Tiger Forum. i think the fans really appreciate that sort of thing so thank you for that yeah. should, should we get into those questions gentlemen yeah sure yeah and obviously i, I you know, I had a look at a few of those questions. There's some stuff there that 
Um, you know, I'll give everyone the heads up. I'll give as much detail as I feel like I can, but obviously with some things bubbling in the background, I hope you don't mind if I pass on a question, I might be able to address it at a later date. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to start, Adam, with the uh, the man of the moment. Everyone's talking about him, Harry Grant. Obviously had a fantastic start of the year. I think he's running second in the Dally M's. I just thought that was a, a great piece of sort of uh, left field recruitment from the club um, going into this year. Do you want to tell us a little bit, one, about how that came about and two, um, yeah, just how happy we are to have Harry playing for us this year? Yeah, and it's... Uh, you know, we I think you by by looking at our roster, you'd probably acknowledge the fact that with Jacob Little's injury, Robbie's retirement, there was a need for a specialist hooker. Um, you know, it came about through the fact that we've got a recruitment committee, uh, myself, the coach, CEO, CFO, uh, and a both recruitment manager and recruitment analyst. So Scotty Woodward, um, our analyst. You know, who works heavily on the numbers that contribute to a player both on on field and in, and in moments. Um, identified that, you know, our, our our roster needed a specialist hooker. Um, you know, his history at the Melbourne Storm, he, you know, sort of identified the fact that Harry was a possibility. Um, conversations started between both Paul Bunn, the recruitment manager at Melbourne, and myself. Um, you know, we caught up one day, had lunch, had a discussion about it. Uh, you know, a few things backwards and forwards um, came to an agreement through credit to both boys and their managers um, for the way that it was handled. You know, and I think, you know, there's a lot of media speculation at the moment about Harry and going back. It's, you know, to make one thing clear, there's no, um, well, there's a very strong understanding from our point, as good as play Harry is, we're of the, of the understanding that you know that agreement was done in good faith that he was going back next year you know and if that did change then the discussion would be had between us and the Melbourne Storm but the plan is obviously we have Jacob returning from injury and we've got um, Jake Simkin who we're really excited about his development coming through is only going to be you know a year older and a, a full season of training under his belt uh, come 2021 so yeah, yes, we're all really excited about Harry and he's, you know, he's a great young man, really strong work ethic, um, great to have around the place. Um, you know, and if he was on the market, would we look at him? I don't think there would be a club that wouldn't. Yeah. Um, but the agreement's in place. You know, it's how we want to do things, you know, especially if we're going to look at doing something like this in the future. It needs to be um, honoured at both ends. You know, same as them with Paul. You know, I thought Paul played really well last night against the Roosters. Um, came up with a really strong try there to put him in a good position. Um, so we're expecting Paul back next year. Um, and if anything like anything changes in the future to do with that, then you know we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. But we're just really happy to have you know, Harry doing what he's doing at the moment. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, first listener question, or this is actually from the West Tigers forum. Uh, Willow, well, this question I think I think in fairness was written before the Bulldogs game. Um, what trades is Madge instilling in the players of training with regards to putting together complete 80-minute performances on the field? Why is it difficult for the players to put an 80-minute performance together given how hard they train at them? I think we can all tell from our coach, he's, you know, he's there to instill the work ethic into both the players and the staff to do what's necessary to win. You know, the couple of the press conferences, a couple of the team chats I've seen, you know, him deliver. It's about just making sure you are prepared to do everything you need to do to do your job and to do your job well. And that's, in summary, you know, there's things that he does daily, there's things that staff do daily, things that uh, players are developing in their routine to make sure they are at their best. But the main message is just get out there and do your job. You know, you are... Uh, you are contracted to play for the West Tigers, and when you put that jersey on, you know you make you sh- make sure you represent us with pride. Yeah, I think Adam, you'll find that pretty much 100 percent of the fans are, are behind Michael Maguire. They know what he's what he's done at, at Wigan and South, and I think they. Oh, I think from my point of view, we know it's going to take a, a little bit of time to to build maybe a, a top four roster, but he certainly he's um he's not in the business anyone excuses, is he? He sort of wants to win and wants to win now and. I think Tigers fans have sort of, we've hovered around that middle, lower end of the table for a decade. And um, 
yeah, I think we've got the right coach on board there. Yeah, and we've had, you know, we've had two strong perform. We've had three probably strong performances, but of the three strong performances, we've had two wins of recent date. You know, and it sets us up for a really um, important game this weekend. You know, it's you know playing the Panthers where we're sitting sixth at the moment. You know, they've they've shown that they're going to be a strong team in the competition. We've got a little bit of momentum, barring some injuries, but. You know, if you're going to go anywhere in this competition, anyone who pulls on the jersey and puts himself in that position needs to be able to get out there and do their job, like I said before. So, big test this week. Um, and it's just going to be good to see where we're at this week, I think. I think the boys have prepared well. And, um, you know, there's no doubt there's, uh, from what I've seen in some of the media articles today, some, you know, referring to the previous coach, uh, hasn't been discussed amongst the playing group or current coach so the focus is obviously making sure we get out there and give ourselves every opportunity to bring the two points home yeah, there you go John. Yep. Um, I was going to ask the next question to Boss which is a great name I think um, what junior player coming through are you most excited about that's a tough question actually um, I think it'd be wrong of me to identify just one of them. I think there's a few of them that uh, I'm really excited. I think I'd be able to give a more distinct answer if there was reserve grade running around at the moment, just so I could see them play. But just probably going off training, um, I'm really excited to see Jake Sim can go around um, probably next year. Um, he might may get an opportunity the back end of this year. Um, you know, we all saw what Tommy Tillau could do. You know, on the weekend, once he gets his opportunity in his natural position of, you know, centre, I think we'll see the best of him. Um, you know, then you've got the likes of Sean Bloor, who we're really excited about. You know, he's Penrith Junior, recovering from an ACL, uh, came to us a couple of months ago. He's he's been working really hard in the gym. You know, the coaches uh, are doing everything they can to give him the opportunity to play sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm excited to see where Sean gets to after a few games under his belt. Um, yeah, there's definitely a few of them that, you know, we're all really excited about, but uh, I think it makes it hard without reserve grade at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Jacob, you just asked about Sean Bloor, so just to follow up, any sort of idea on how long it might be before he takes the field again but obviously as you say very hard without reserve grade to get that yeah I, um, I, I don't think he's too far off in terms of staff feeling confident that he would be able to, to do a job it's just obviously you know if you keep winning you give everyone an opportunity barring injury to to back up that performance um, you know the boys that won't play uh, tomorrow night against the Panthers, they've got a, a scrimmage against Pen, uh, Penrith out at Penrith, so um, they will have an opportunity to play a you know a small sided game against Penrith tomorrow just to to push their case for selection. So uh, it's the first one that we'll have. Um, so yeah, we're all going to have to watch that. So it'll be good to see the blokes who haven't had a, haven't had a haven't had game time since round one uh, for West um, pull on the jersey and play some footy. Yeah, exactly. Cool, and just. Just around like sort of recruitment strategy, Adam, I know you, you can't give us away all your, your secrets and stuff you're talking about. A couple of years ago, um, you know, the Tigers tended, we recruited some experienced players who are who good footballers, maybe on, on longer term detail, uh, uh, deals. Um, now it seems like you mentioned uh, Bloor and Simpkins and we got a young Stefano joining next year. Is that sort of a conscious decision to move to maybe trying to get some... Um, a younger roster back in. I know back in, you know, when we won the competition a long time ago in 05, we seemed to have a, a glut of local juniors, you know, like your Robbie Farris, Dean Hallettows, Bronson Harrison, Liam Fultons. That's, that's tended like, seem to have dried up a little bit the last few years. I don't know if that's right, but was that sort of a, a conscious effort to get some more um, younger players into the roster? Yeah, so it is. It's uh, been some discussions that we've had, you know, internally. Um, there's definitely been a, probably a little bit of a change of philosophy and that's not through you know anyone's wrongdoing or right doing but just the the identification of you know bringing them through 
um, you know, learning the way that we want to play uh, under the coach, learning the systems of the club, learning the culture of the club. I think if we can build a roster of, you know, which I think we've, we've managed to do, it, a group of younger blokes coming through, and once they get some games under their belt together, we're only going to see um, you know, a strong improvement. We're really excited about you know, those young blokes coming in together. Um, it's funny you say Stefano, uh, young Parramatta boy, he's actually a, a West junior. So he's he's one that we identified early on, um, you know, and spoke about when we, you know, had a chat with Stefano about bringing him home. So he's a Liverpool Catholic club junior uh, originally before he made his way uh, across to Parramatta. Um, so he's one that we identified to bring home. But it's that's part of our, our big push and our pathways around... Um, you know, giving our, our local juniors every opportunity uh, to come through to play first grade. And that's, you know, I think that's the advantage of a club like us with our, our big base, you know, could have. And that's um, something we'd like to do. Uh, the reality is that, you know, they need to be up to a certain standard to play NRL. Um, and it's not to just pull on the jersey, but it's to make sure that whoever pulls on that jersey is going to give us every opportunity towards winning a comp, because that's what we're here for. Adam, um, so, you know, obviously uh, an issue that still remains a, a, a one that, that, that did, I think, hurt the fan base a fair bit, a fair bit. That's the Ryan Madison situation. We had a few questions about uh, exactly what happened there, but I, I guess it's, it must be frustrating from within a club to lose a quality player like that, because you, know, you don't plan that sort of exit. And, you know, I, I think that, it's a situation that you've got to try and manage yourself best out of. Is that sort of the feeling that I got? It was sort of a situation that we really were backed into a bit of a corner on that one. Yeah, and without going into too much detail, obviously, the uh, you know, situation um, you know, it was what it was and it, it happened and it was about uh, us doing every, everything we could to, to make sure that the club benefited from it and you know, there's a lot of people outside and I saw some of the questions um, put on Facebook in preparation for the meeting. Um, without going into the detail, as I said, the, the reality is um, I think we felt that Ryan was made his mind up that he was going. Um, you know, we could have drawn a line in the sand and but eventually for him, you know, us making him stay there when he didn't want to stay there, we would have been paying salary cap dollars that, you know, would have contributed to a player that you know may or may not have left three or four months later, um, pending how he returned, uh, and that would obviously impact on the type of player that we could get back into the club um, in his spot. Um, you know, and if that was the case, we wouldn't have had the the opportunity nor the salary cap space to go after an Adam Dewey, um, Joey Leilua, or even you know, for example, you know, pitching to another club potential swap. Um, you know, and one of those was Luciano Leilua, which we got in the end anyway. So, um, you know, I'm sure it was hard for the fans to see and it was it was definitely disappointing to lose a player of Ryan's calibre at that stage, but we just needed to make sure we did everything we could to preserve as much salary cap space as we could on that exit. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think Tigers fans the last couple of weeks are starting to get excited about that, um, yeah, that right-hand side. I said BJ performed the last couple of weeks and it's sort of if you add one or two class players and I think Adam Dewey's been good at fullback, it can sort of make players around them um, look better. But I've got a question from Tiger Steve and this was, this was probably after the Gold Coast loss, Adam, so don't take offence to this question, but he says, there is a really, <laughs> yeah, so passionate Tiger fans, they're all passionate, um, might have been 10 minutes. He says, there is an undeniable fragility about the, clubs, about the club in winning the clutch moments. Um, basically what is being put change that. I think um, Michael Maguire in his press conference the last few weeks probably answered that question. Yeah, it's probably more a, it's probably more a match question. I know he's, he's working hard on that. Um, it's something that we've spoken about internally about, you know, going back to what I said before about just doing your job and doing your job well. Um, yeah, the Titans one was definitely a hard one for, for us all to, you know, sort of swallow at the time. But I think the bounce back that we saw, you know, while still not getting the two points, the defensive effort against Canberra for, you know, probably 60 minutes of that game. And then we shot ourselves in the foot, the back end of that game. 
Um, but the application and the defensive uh, attitude in that match was a, a massive improvement. Uh, and then obviously the first half against the Cows was you know, extremely impressive, only the drop off. And then, you know, we saw close to an 80 minute performance last week against the Dogs, still with some stuff to, that we want to improve on. Um, you know, just, I feel like we've been building nicely and hopefully we continue to build this weekend. Yeah, and I think as a fan, I mean, it's it's not just, well, speaking personally, what I enjoyed and probably as much as I enjoyed 05, what I really enjoyed was how it all came together and you could see it coming together over the 18 months or two years before. And I can sort of see that now. So that's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you energised as a fan. Yeah. So it's not about the wins. It's about seeing that you're going in the right direction. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I have to agree. I, I uh, yeah, The Titans game hurt. No, there's no doubt about that. But then you, you know, you got to, sun will come up tomorrow, and you got to get over it, and you got to improve. And you know, fans have got every right to be filthy, you know, because I, you know, it's the it's the fans and the members that obviously contribute financially as part of their, you know, hard-earned wage to make sure that they're part of the club. But it's no one's no one likes losing, and losing, you know, in, in a in a professional environment is. No, it's not accepted because it's not what you're there for. But if we can be proud of a team that puts out an effort like they did against, especially the first half against the Raiders, well, you know, we're still going to be hard to beat. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that was, I think that was a good reaction for the Titans without getting the two points, which was still disappointing. Um, but I think you've seen, especially from coaches' press conferences, you know, we've we've built on that nicely over the past couple of weeks. But means nothing if you can't do it against a team in the top four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Eddie and I sit here every week and we do talk about goal kicking and there's a few questions about goal kicking. Is it something that we're working on? Is it something that we definitely. might see some room for improvement? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's uh, something that we've discussed internally since I've arrived. Uh, something that we're working on weekly. It's been pretty hard with the fact that players are in the um, Apollo group bubble. So we're going to have so many staff members um, and players in that bubble, uh, which means our training has been restricted to having uh, specialist coaches come in and assist. Um, but you know, Hodjo has been working really closely with Moses, um, especially in the past couple of weeks to work on his technique. Uh, and it's definitely something that we've identified. So. Uh, Adam, I've got a question here from Fabian. Again, this, this uh, long predates your time and Madge's time at the club, but he says, what's our plan to stop losing our best players? Now, this is probably going well back to um, James Tedesco, Mitchell Moses, Aaron Woods. There were lots of guys before that, Andrew Fafita, Ben Teo, and even Pappenhausen last night at the Storm. It's sort of frustrating as a Tigers fan when you see um, some of the best players in the competition running around for other uh, jumpers, but I thought maybe this would be a time you could talk about the um, new development going in there at Concord and, and just the fact that we seem to be getting the right, in the right positions there um, off the yeah. field. Yeah, I think the first thing in addressing that, oh, I can't talk about the history, I can only talk about my time here is you know, the salary cut's actually designed, um, while sometimes it might not seem that way, designed to even up the competition. So when you've got you know, some scenarios that present itself where players may feel they get a better opportunity in terms of playing opportunity, they're going to go. Um, if it's a better financial opportunity, unless you can match it, depending on your roster management, then they may go. But then, as you said there, Eddie, it's, the, it's what do you provide around that? And obviously the club's working really hardly on um, providing the most professional environment possible for the players and the staff. Um, I'm sure the podcast you've spoken about the fact that the Centre of Excellence is probably 18 months away, um, based at Concord there. You know, we've had some virtual walkthroughs. We've shown some uh, potential recruits, what that looks like. Unbelievable facility that I know that the club's worked really hard on for the past five years um, in conjunction with um, council. Uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, anyone who's sort of driven past Concord Oval have probably seen the demolition crew pulling down the stands in preparation for that build. Uh, and even so, we've moved into a temporary facility at the moment, which you can sort of see behind me here. It's, uh, you know, it's it's a step up from where we were at Concord, uh, Concord Oval there. And, you know, I think the, 
the vibe here is is definitely improving um, in comparison to, you know, if you look at coming from where we came from in Concord Oval there, the you know, players are coming over, they're seeing where we're where we're going, they stand in the hallways here of this temporary facility and look, you know, down the hallway, you know, a couple of hundred metres and they see, you know, diggers working on, you know, the centre of excellence. So we're based here, we get to see the build, you know, you can walk out, and, you know, this time last week you could hear um, things being pulled down. So it's all real now, I think, for the club and, and we're living it day by day and, you know, the performance is on field. Um, translate into that uh, centre of excellence. But the, the big thing that we're trying to sell internally um, and make sure that everyone is across, doesn't matter what your facilities are like, it's about the type of people that you've got in the organisation, um, the culture that you've got, the belief you've got and the supporter base that you've got that makes the football club. The rest of it is just a benefit. Yeah. Well, I think we've got the best. I think you've got the best fans in the game. I, I, you know, I look at some of the fans from the other clubs, and and just there's something about West Tigers fans and that resilience and that passion that just, and and you know, we've made the finals three times in twenty years, and we're still here, and we, we love the club just as much, if not more. And um, yeah, you know, how many how many uh, how many uh, subscribers or followers does your podcast have? Um, so the podcast gets uh, somewhere around 2,000 downloads a week. Uh, obviously, it varies, it varies on whether the Tigers have lost or won. Sometimes that has an impact <laughs> an effect on what's going on. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a couple of hundred a day and obviously peaks just after we've recorded one. Um, and yeah, right. Uh, yeah, a lot of Facebook is certainly a big focus as well for us. So. I'd love to know too if there's any way that you can find out how many of them are uh are members of the club as well. Because obviously that's a big push for us moving forward. Like I said at the start, how do we convert, you know, and we've got people here who are working on that, obviously, but, you know, we, we need to change the the model, the AFL model that people are proud to be members. Mm. You know, we, we need that in rugby league to make sure, especially after this COVID period, how, you know, make sure that we've got everyone on board. You know, and I know we've got, you know, one of the biggest fan bases and that's great. You know, it's but getting them on board and what, what do they want us yeah. to get on board? What do they want from us? You know, I know they want a connection to the club and they want, you know, connection to the players. And, um, you know, it's, I think it's definitely a journey that we should all be going on together. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I, I think, um, Adam, I've been a member for probably the last 10 years or 12 years. And um, one of the things that's often discussed among the fan base, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, but it's about the, the home ground situation. We tend to get great attendances, um, you know, when we're on fire at Leichhardt and I've been to Campbelltown. I like going to watch games at Campbelltown. And then Bank West is obviously a, a world-class stadium. And I enjoyed going there last year, even though I didn't feel we had a, a real sort of home ground advantage. Um, what do you think the future of that is going forward? Obviously, it's a, it's a sort of a delicate one, but do you think maybe we'd be able to attract more members if we had one, one permanent home ground in the future? Yeah, Eddie, I, to be honest, I couldn't comment on that. I know yeah. that there's a group working pretty hard on, um, you know, what that looks like moving forward. Um, I think from a football you know, perspective in terms of... Uh, I haven't even had a conversation with the coach, to be honest. I think it's just I've walked in here thinking, you know, that's the norm. Yeah. Um, and we're servicing all of our members, but I think if you are purely football, you know, and excluded those, and I know that you can't do that, but purely football, I think you'd like to have a home ground advantage, mm. you know, much like Melbourne Storm had the Cauldron years ago and, you know, Lang Park and, um, but in saying, what does that look like? I couldn't tell you, yeah. you know, if I did know, then I'd be pushing hard, but, um, yeah, it is an interesting question and it's definitely one where I think, you know, we'd need to take all considerations, you know, into that decision. Um, and if we could make a fortress of a home ground, much like, you know, Brookie on a Sunday Arvo, well then that contributes to wins and that's what the fans want to see, members want to see. So I think, um, you know, members and fans would happily give up a stadium if they had to, if they knew that, it was going to make us a lot harder to beat at a certain stadium. Um, but that's just, 
from a football perspective, that would be my only view on that. Sure. You know, Eddie and I have gone backwards and forwards and changed our minds and looked at every stadium and option, <laughs> every different angle. We can't really come up with the perfect option. So, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah I look, it'll resolve. Yeah, so Eddie, we don't need to right now. That's, uh, yeah. you know, we're playing, playing a banquet at the moment. Uh, a couple of games at Campbelltown, which I thought was really good. You know, it's been really different without fans. I can tell you that it's been, you know, that round two against Newcastle at Leichhardt, while yeah. I'm sure extremely hard to watch, it was actually really hard to, to sit there on the sideline. Um, it was just, you know, the expectation of what you would usually run out to at Leichhardt um, yeah. it was very different, very eerie. So I've gone from... You know, that on the sideline round two to now I'm sitting next to the coach in the coach's box. Um, you know, and, and thankfully we started to get some fans back, you know, from this week and hopefully we get some full stadiums shortly and we get to see, you know, a, a packed Bankwest or Campbelltown or Leichhardt where, you know, the, the fans get their opportunity to come back out and support the team. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, Sunny Coast Tiger, just back to, to players and, and roster... Uh, Corey Thompson, I think all West Tigers fans were, you know, we, we don't, we're happy for him to have a great outcome, but we had so much respect for him and it's sort of sad to lose him. He's, uh, Sunny Coast Tigers asking, you know, what are the plans to replace Corey? And he asked about a few of the younger players, and these are guys we've heard quite a lot about in recent years. Jock Madden, Kane Bradley, Zach Cheney. Where, where do they stand? And, and how does it work with not being able to play? We obviously focus a lot on the the main squad, but it must be really hard for those sorts of guys who try to prove themselves and get out there and just can't can't do it at the moment. Yeah. So firstly on Corey, that was that was a really tough one for all of us to take. You know, it was um, especially hard, I'm sure, for the playing group. But when you know Corey came came to the coach and I initially and just sort of said, look, there's an opportunity at the Titans and. Um, I think if you think back, we sort of stall on it for a bit, and yeah. Yeah. I think we handled it really well. While the media probably um, or was only getting sort of one side of it, you know, we kept through myself. We kept Corey up to date with everything we could. Uh, I worked with Justin Holbrook at my previous club, so I'd keep Justin up to date as much as I could. You know, by letting him know that obviously we'd had a few injuries and Corey was close to being back playing and um, so I thought we handled it really well regardless of you know what the the outside sort of thought Uh, I think Corey was really happy with that Um, it was hard to lose him as I said players staff especially Um, he's very very popular very well liked Uh, one of the first players to put up his hand for a community event Um, you know but ultimately I think we got to the point where you know Corey hadn't been home uh, for 10 years in his professional career. Uh, this was an opportunity to sign a career which would see him possibly finish his career, you know, living in the home state of where he grew up. Um, you know, and there's, you know, obviously some things that we, once we sort of realised that, we started to sort of dig around around potential replacements, which we haven't, you know, finalised yet. But, um, you know, we needed to do some homework around what could happen if we did let Corey go. and. You know, I think we're we're definitely working on that, and there's you know things in the pipeline which we can't discuss. But just just to give some context around the whole Corey one, it definitely wasn't an easy decision. Yeah. Um, in terms of those other fellows, yeah, they're they're working their backsides off as well. It's it's obviously hard for them to not have a game um, to focus on at the back end of the week. Um, tomorrow is their first scrimmage day. Uh, or, or scrimmage session or, you know, close to game sort of scenario that they'll have with a um, bit of a modified game of either sevens or nines against the, the same sort of players in terms of roster at the Panthers. Um, so we've got that tomorrow afternoon and then that gives us enough time to do that, pack ourselves up and then the staff who are, staff who are involved shift off to Bankwest to get ready for tomorrow night's game. Um you know, those blokes that you mentioned are all on contract uh, for 2021. So this year's, you know, probably um, hard for them because it's probably a really important development year for them to play some footy and prepare themselves for the top squad next year. So 
um, it's been it's been really good to get you know the fact that they've missed games not great but next part is they're having regular high intensity sessions against our NRL team which obviously is as close to game standard as what they could yeah. um, which would be probably a better standard than playing a reserve grade game anyway it's just without the actual game scenario so yeah. but we've put some things in place to make sure that you know, best possible development plan is in place for them to give them give themselves every opportunity for next year. Well, I've got um, one from David Farrell, Adam, and you might not be able to answer all of this. He says, "What what positions are the Tigers looking at strengthening next year, and and how much cap space do you have?" I was going to say more. How how important is to, is just getting your salary cap right? Because I know I look at clubs the last few years like the Bulldogs and stuff who seemingly, whilst they try hard, really, really um, every week. Um, they've sort of they're not in a position where their salary cap's exactly where they want it to be. Is it, is it more important than ever to have your salary cap in order? Yeah, it's look, it's a big part. It's a you know, and some clubs will go through consistent periods where they've made some really smart decisions. Um, some clubs will unfortunately go through peaks and troughs, just like, but and that's what it's designed for. It's designed to you know, give every club every opportunity to have um, a balanced roster through, you know, equalising opportunity for everyone's got the same amount of money to spend. It's just how they spend it. Um, you know, I think, you know, roster management, it's, it's, you know, it's very important. That's why there's, you know, people assigned to just that. You know, it's, um, it's something that every club works really hard at. And, you know, you need to identify what needs you require um, and that's that was one of our main considerations come back end of November when you know discussions about Harry first came up. You know, Lidsey did his did his knee in a pretty horrific accident last year at Manly. Um, you know, and and the time frame that was put on the recovery for that knee identified the fact that you know uh, we didn't know what Hooker was going to look like. We did. I think Moses did some time at Hooker in preseason. Um, Josh Reynolds did some time at Hooker, um, you know, and then being able to identify the fact that we needed a specialist hooker, um, you know, and Paul was going to go and play, you know, a fair, fair bit of time at Melbourne, opened up that opportunity. So it is, it's it's important to identify what do you need and what do you need for right now to make yourself and give yourself every opportunity to, to compete. Yeah, I, I, I don't envy you know, trying to juggle all of that and looking into the future as well. It must, it's a, I'm sure it's a massive task and a massive you know, drain on, on, on everybody's brain all the time thinking about that cap management, not just now, not just in three months, but in two or three years even. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've, got, uh, we've got some lists, you know, that change daily, um, some forecasting around where do we feel players will end up, where do we feel players will get to, you know, and we can get to the end of a week and watch a game and, you know, reconvene and mm. make some slight adjustments here, slight adjustments there. Who's coming off contract? Who's, you know, who could be looking to extend early? Who could, you know, there's there's so many different things that go into it. And then you, that's just internally. And then you need to look at, you know, the other 15 clubs who are doing the same thing. Yeah. All those external forces as well. Yeah. Big job. Um, last question from from our listener, Belmain Junior. Is the new 30th player currently external to the club or are we looking internally? Are we at 29 with the loss of Corey Thompson? Yeah, we're at 29 at the moment uh, with Corey obviously departing. Uh, you know, due to COVID, the new rules state that you actually don't have to fill that 30th spot. Okay. Um, so we've got until August 3rd. So the new, the new June 30th, Deadline or the date uh, for this year is August third, so we've got uh, you know a month today to either finalise that spot uh, or we just leave it and, and move forward with the squad we've got. But yeah, I think you'll I think you'll find in the next month there could be there could be you know some movement between clubs. That's not to say that it's going to be us, but you know in the last month clubs are, are trying to readjust to give themselves every opportunity to either. Um, you know, give himself every chance for this year or to improve their roster from this year and beyond. 
sure. I've just got one more here, Joel and Adam. It's from uh, Joseph Hall. He goes, hi, Adam. Big, big fan of yours. Followed your career closely at Roosters when you were there and was really excited when I heard you were coming to the Tigers. My question is, do you think we are one big forward short of a solid pack? I think, um, personally, like uh, Tigers fans have been really excited this year about our pack, how, how young it is and how much probably improvement a lot of those guys have got. And I think... Um, yeah, I think our pack's yeah, going in a, a little bit in the media of how good some guys like um, like Josh Alloway and, and Lucci and guys like that are going. Yeah, it's a good question from Hawley. I think uh, I think I know Hawley. That's why he's been <laughs> he actually, commented about me. Uh, he actually yeah. put, um, <laughs> down the bottom, he said, do you think you are the best looking male in your family? I left that out, but if you know him, I'll put it in. <laughs> That's definitely not the case. I know, I know exactly who Hawley is. Uh, but it is a good question. I think we're, you know, we were really excited about our pack this year, especially the fact that, um, you know, they were significantly underrated. I think we're, you know, disappointing to lose Zane Musgrove for the length of time that we have. I thought, you know, he's he's big, he's aggressive. It would have been good to see him get a few games under his belt to get himself match fit. But, you know, some of the boys are doing a great job at the moment. You know, I thought... Um, you know, Josh is playing some of the best footy that he's played um, in a long time. Uh, you know, Luciano has been, I think, a surprise for everyone external. Um, I think in our recruitment and retention meetings, you know, we always felt Luciano was going to get to this point, you know, and hopefully better. Um, Luciano was never an 80-minute player at the Dragons. No, not close, yeah. You know, never, never considered, uh, and that's not bagging them, or, you know, whether it was his training ethic, but the feedback we're getting, and I think, you know, some of you saw the, the videos floating around on Twitter of him bouncing up and down at half time, and but he's yeah. just, personality is just infectious, yeah. you know, and he's, he's loving his time here and he's playing good footing, and that's, that's what it's about, you know, it's, you know, we're not going to get all of them right, but um, the ones we do need to get right need to contribute week in, week out. Yeah, I think that goes back to that point about you can see the improvement. So you can see that instead of looking at the whole team, you just look at areas and you think if you strengthen that little bit and strengthen this, then yeah. it does change the whole way that you feel about the team. You see the yeah. progress that it's making, yeah. Um, last I question. Think, I think it's the same with Joey. You know, Joey's, mm. I think we're just starting to see some clean ball to Joey the past couple of weeks. And, yeah. you know, there's some of the feedback uh, online around what Joey had done previously to the West Tigers in the camera jersey. Yeah. Hopefully we get to see some of that wearing a West Tigers jersey. Yeah, exactly. Nice to see. I wouldn't like him running at me, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> Adam, last question. How do we beat the Panthers? How do we beat the Panthers? Score Panthers. Score, score Sorry. More Thanks, Eddie. Score, score, more, points. score more points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, the good thing about the Panthers is obviously, you know, they've, they've started really strong. Nathan Cleary is, uh, you know, a key person in that um, squad there. Um, Kickout is obviously another one. Uh, I think if we can, when when's this going to air? Last <laughs> job. Saturday. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I won't give too much away. No, I think if we can score more points again, then we'll win. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say just... Um, just finally, Adam, just taking off your general manager's hat, just as a fan yep. of the game, are you enjoying the new uh, Ruck Rule 6 again love this it. year? It's much better to work I, with the I love it. Like, how good, yeah. you know, I know it was my previous club, but how good was yeah. that game of footy last night? You know, yeah. Best game for a long time. Yeah. You know, as a fan, that's what you want to watch. You know, you don't want to, as a, as a fan of the West Tigers, you want to watch 54 nil wins every week so that you don't have the the heart rate going through the roof every two minutes. But, you know, as a as a football fan, you love to see games like that. And it's unfortunate someone needs to lose. You know, I think while Golden Point's really good for obviously the fans and the ratings and all that sort of stuff, it's, you know, you'd love to see both teams deserve a point there. But um, that was one of the, if it's not the best game of footy I've seen, it's definitely one of, um, you know, and the fact that, you know, I'm a, old crew there have got a few significant injuries and, you know, they'll, Robbo's you know, a really good coach. He'll, he'll get them prepared to give everything they've got coming into the business end. Um, and then Melbourne Storm, you know, like 
Um, Cameron Smith, doesn't matter what position he plays, he just finds a way to, to get all those blokes on board, you know, pushing in the same direction. And um, yeah, he's, he's definitely a player that you know, we may never see again. <laughs> Well, it'd be a shame if he retires this year. He could play on another couple of years, for sure. Oh, I'd love him to go another two <laughs> years and want to play hooker. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Adam, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And uh, if have a track, we'll, we'll do this again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Look forward to it. Um, thanks very much for, obviously, all your support, gentlemen, uh, on the podcast. And uh, look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Cheers, gentlemen.